Good morning. So, how is your Lent going? Now, I don't want to brag, but I have been able to keep my commitment to give up both dieting and exercise. And on that note, let's delve into today's Gospel. It's Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Now, he left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Now, whenever Jesus stood up and preached, his words were met with two very different responses. Some listened and were filled with awe and wonder. Their hearts were stirred by God's love and mercy, and they were challenged to seek repentance and turn back to God. Others were overcome with rage and hatred. With hardened hearts, they accused Jesus of being a demon or insane. But whatever the response, it is clear that Jesus' words cut to the heart of the human condition. Now, even facing fear of arrest or violence, Jesus could not be silenced. And here, 2,000 years later, the power of his message invites us to heed the call, to turn back to God, and challenges us to be his instrument of justice, peace, and love in a world that desperately needs to remember that God walks with us through the darkness towards the promise of new life. Lent is about journeying with Jesus through the darkness of betrayal, rejection, hatred, and ultimately murder. It is a journey we would rather not take. I mean, it is hard to spend time in self-reflection only to realize that at times we too have given in to anger and hatred. But thanks be to God who promises a place of forgiveness, of hope and blessing. A place where we find the courage to stand firm in God's truth, to fight oppression, to offer healing and encouragement. This is the good news of the cross. After the sorrow, there is new life. Have we got grown complacent to the fact that people are still dying from COVID? Is it merely a number? Have we forgotten that behind each statistic, there is a grieving family? How can we look at the images coming out of the Ukraine, the destruction, the loss of innocent lives, and not be moved to tears, to anger? How can we remain silent? Easter morning is our victory hymn. Jesus has shattered the darkness of man's hearts and souls with the light of his love and mercy. May we continue through this Lenten journey with tender and responsive hearts, 
fearlessly walk in the footsteps of Jesus into the promise of new life. May we become channels of God's grace. Amen. Any blessings? Until next time. Bye for now.